Good morning, good morning. I just wanted to um, knock this video out real quick before I um, hit the gym. Um, this is part two to the video that I did on marriage, relationships, and uh, how to win with money, right? So what I wanna discuss is creating a budget. Now this is after you both already sat down to the table and agreed that, you know, y'all gonna put y'all resources together and work together as a team to start to win with money, right? And um, I believe that's the very first step. If you didn't go check that video out, go back and check that video out so you can actually uh, get all the information on that video so we can be where we are right now. You know what I'm saying? You can understand how we moving forward. So right now, um, you need to go back to the table, get you a pen and pad or a pencil and pad, and uh, this is where all the work is going to take place, you know, in creating this budget. Um, I like to say this uh, before I get into that. For people who feel like a budget is restrictive, a budget is actually a plan for your money. And that's what you need. The reason why, I like, your, situ your situation is the way it is because you don't have a plan for your money. You're just spending money kind of recklessly. And um, a budget will also show you where you stand financially. You know what I mean? And it let you know if you're living above and beyond your means and where you need to make the adjustment set. So if you see it on paper, the reality becomes more clearer. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I would suggest always write your budget down and keep track of everything. So the, the big bills that we have, like our mortgage, our rent, um, car payments, student loans, um, or any other type of loan, we pretty much know um, what that is going to be, what that payment is. Where we lose sight of our money and where money gets lost in space is our day-to-day -day spending. You know what I mean? And that's really where the majority of the bleeding takes place because if you just out swiping your card or you just out just spending cash, you're not thinking about it until it's all gone you know what i'm saying so in order to get track of that money right because that's where the majority of the bleeding takes place you want to start getting receipts for every transaction that you do everything you spend money on you want a receipt for it a receipt is a record of your spending right you got to remember your household is a business you got money coming in and you got money going out so why not treat it like a business? You know what I'm saying? Even if you're just working a job to um, uh, bring in your income to your household, it's still a business. You got money coming in and you got money going out. So in order to maintain and, and build with money, you all have to keep track of your spending. And that's very important. And a budget helps you do that, right? So let me get into it. Um, So now you're at the table with your pen and pad and... You all want to be honest, very honest at this point. If y'all money not together, you want to be very honest. If y'all decide to put y'all money together, uh, you definitely want to be honest and transparent. And um, everybody should have access to um, those funds that are that's combined. So it can be a checks and balances in the relationship. You don't want one person um, just holding the access to the, the account of the money. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you know, because trust is a big issue when it comes to money. Especially if you're not married and y'all decide to like combine one account and stuff like that. Um, you definitely want the transparency regardless of who's uh, technically like managing managing the money. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now that you're at the table, what you want to do is at the top of the page, you want to write down the income, both of y'all income. Any income that comes into the household, you want to write this down and add it up. It could be, you know, a side hustle, a side business. It could be... Um, you know, spousal support, um, child support, anything. It's all income, right? Write this down, add it up. <clears throat> Underneath that, you want to write down all of y'all expenses, both of y'all, student loans, credit cards, utilities, mortgage, everything. Write all your expenses down and then add that up. Once you're at this point right here, you want to subtract your expenses from your income. Now, if you had a negative number, once you do that, you got some work to do. A lot of work. If you got a lot of debt, like credit card debt, um, student loan debt, if you got um, uh, store credit, 
you know, store credit cards and things of that nature that you done ran up, um, you, you want to you wanna start to get rid of those. But once you see where you at financially, this will let you know exactly where, um, what you need to pinpoint in order to get yourself out of this hole. And this is just like the, um, the first step to that. So at this point, what you can do is, even if you got a positive number, you still got work to do because you might not be where you want to be financially. You can always do better. See, look, the goal is in a situation where you got two people working jobs, the goal should be to live off one income and stack the second income, right? But before you get there, you got to see where you at. And that's why I encourage you to do a budget. So once you do your budget, you subtract the your expenses from your income. Now you get to see where you can start to cut back on your expenses, right? Because it may be certain things that, or like subscriptions and stuff like that, that you're not even using that you can cut off in order to increase your income. Because any debt that you eliminate automatically increases your income because you don't, ha you don't have to pay that debt no more. So, you know, a lot of people will tell you, oh, knock out the biggest debt, knock out the smallest debt. Knocked out is knocked out. Once you eliminate some of the unnecessary spending and um in your expense column and you start dedicating that money to paying off any debt yo paid off is paid off don't put too much thought in to trying to analyze what debt to pay off i know they have done um videos and and everybody got the bright idea about which one to pay off first but yo just go ahead and pay off a debt pick one and focus all your extra income to paying off that debt now, the hard part when, when you um paying off your debt is staying consistent. This is a good time for you and your significant other to disappear. Get off the scene. Don't be seen everywhere. Don't try to go and do what everybody else is doing because it's going to distract you. Because once you get around everybody, just by os osmosis, you're just going to want to do what they do. You know what I'm saying? Or it's going to make you feel a certain type of way because all your debt, all your extra money is going to paying off your debt. And it's going to seem like everybody else is living life. Everybody else is winning. And you just so far behind that you're never going to catch up. That's not true. And look, you got to be patient during this process because depending on the extent of your debt or the hole that you got to get out of, this could take one to three years, you know, just to get out of the debt. But here's the caveat to that. If you want to um, increase the uh, time that it takes you to get out of the hole, you want to increase your income. And you can increase your income by getting another job, right? Both of y'all get a second job or get a part-time job or start a side business or a side hustle and just dedicate that money to throwing at your debt with your extra money that you got um, coming in to your, your regular income. You know what I mean? That's a way to like enhance getting out of debt. And then look, once you get out of debt, you already developed the habit of generating more income. So now once you're out of debt, all that debt is gone, that increases your income along with the side hustle or side business or side job that you got. You know what I mean? And it puts y'all in a great position to get into where you can live off one income. And preferably at the end of the day, you want to end up living off of uh, the income that you don't have to work for. So if you decide to continue to work your job, your job is just extra income. You're not forced to uh, uh, get a promotion or beg for a promotion or try to chase the uh, climbing a ladder because you don't have to because now you're in a position where you got money that's generated from outside your job that's taking care of your life. And everything that you're doing at your job is just basically not free money because you're working for it, but it's money that you can just stack and do other things in life with. You know, another thing I want to say, I probably should have said this earlier is this. Before, once you do your budget and you see where you are and you start cutting off things and, and, and freeing up extra money so you can start putting towards your debt. Before you start doing anything towards your debt, you want to save $5,000, right? And this $5,000 is going to be your emergency fund. Like I, I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, just save a thousand dollars and blah, blah, blah. And a thousand dollars ain't going to do it. 
You know what I'm saying? Because like a typical car repair, like one car repair can cost you anywhere from $1,500 up to $5,000. Like a transmission or, you know, an engine problem or something like that. It can be pretty pricey. But if you save $5,000, that $5,000 pretty much can cover any small emergency that you may have. And that's critical in this process because you don't want to keep taking from what you have to put towards the debt that you're paying off every time something happens. You want to have this money to the side. And look, when something happens, the first thing you want to do is, let's say, for instance, you got the $5,000 set to the side and you have a $2,000 emergency. Now you got $3,000. So instead of going hard at the debt, what you want to do is build back up your, uh, your emergency fund, back up to $5,000 and then get back to paying off your debt. And once you end up paying off your debt, this ain't the time. This ain't the time to chill. You know what I'm saying? Now you want to increase your emergency fund to at least one year of your annual salary, right? Maybe two years if that's that'll make you more comfortable. But at least one year of your annual salary, and that way now you gotta secure a large um, emergency fund. And you don't have to worry about stacking money in that emergency fund no more because you already did it. And now you can move on to saving money for whatever you want to save money for, be it investments, paying your house off faster, getting a new car, um, starting a business or anything like that. So that's pretty much all I got on that. But the key is, in this situation is you want to track your spending, create a budget and you want to stay consistent on that budget. You know what I mean? Now, a budget is just a guideline. You know, there may be times where, you know, you got to, you know, maneuver your money around to make certain things happen. But look, it's just a guideline. It'll help keep you focused and on track to reaching your goal of getting out of debt. You know what I mean? And hopefully y'all will be able to work together. Sometimes you may have problems, but look, just come to the table and think about the end goal. Where are we trying to get to? You know what I'm saying? There's always going to be problems down the line, but if you focus on the goal, the problems in between ain't going to matter. Stay focused on the goal. All right? I hope that was helpful to someone. Um, you know, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. You know what I mean? I'll see y'all in the next one.